exciting things to me about using dynamic web maps is that we can actually model and analyze the dynamic earth with them. So for example right here I've got some real-time weather data from NOAA and notice that the data in here is actually global in scope. So sure there are some missing points in some continents and some countries but it's fascinating to be able to do this. Now what do these colors mean? Well these colors are based on, on temperature and so we can right away see that uh, Scandinavia, northern Canada is a lot colder right now than the equatorial and sub-equatorial regions. Now what if we did this at night? At night in certain parts of the world or at noon in other parts of the world or in winter in the northern hemisphere versus winter in the southern hemisphere. So even even just this one layer has lots of, of great possibilities with investigation in an educational context. Now another thing that's really exciting to me is that we can go ahead and let's use our bookmark here and just go ahead now to go to the continental USA. What I'm going to do here is show you that you don't just have to have one choice here when you're mapping things. So we've got current temperature and we're going to go ahead and check that symbology again so the darker colors mean higher temperature. But we can also analyze it in this way. We can look at a surface. So I've generated an interpolated surface where now these surfaces represent temperature. And notice that I've, I've clipped it to the continental USA. I, in other words, I defined my, my extent of my raster layer in this case, my zones of temperature to be the continental US. Why? Well, because there are several good reasons. Number one, as you saw earlier, there aren't very many temperature readings in certain places, oceans, and in certain countries. So I didn't want to interpolate the surface where there's not very much data. That could lead to dangerous uh, interpretations of that data. Let's go ahead and take off the current temperature here. I want to show you something else. And that is if I select certain geography. So for example, I've got a USA continental states map. I've just selected California here with the filtering tool which is over right here, filter. So what I've done is I can look at my filter. It says where state name equals California. So now that I've filtered just for California, let's go ahead and zoom in there. Now if I generate an interpolated surface or any other kind of analysis, then I've only got in my final study, I've just got the temperature for California, which is really exciting because then I can again zoom in and limit my study. Now another good teachable moment here is that I've got two different uh, maps here in terms of the interpolated surface. Notice that um, as I toggle on and off California, especially down in the southeast corner, notice that the, the zones are slightly different and the reason why is because with this layer I'm actually interpolating based on all of the points found in the continental United States. So Southeast California it also considers Southern Nevada and Western Arizona. But if I just look at this one it's only considering the temperature readings in California. So a nice teachable moment there that depending on the data inputs and remember the data inputs are these points right here your interpolated surface is going to be different and that's of course true in temperature but it's also true in a whole host of other data as well. Fascinating. While I'm here let me show you some of the other data that I've got in this data set. I've also got the ridge precipitation radar so I can see that uh, at the moment there's there's some nasty storms going on in the central United States. Again looking at real-time data and now I'm going to look at the pressure Okay, so we've got the pressure points here. We've got some, what do these, what do these colors mean? Okay, so we, in millibars, we've got higher pressure with these darker colors, lower pressure with these lighter colors. Interesting. And where we've got differences, uh, vast differences over a short amount of space, of course, we've got some, some fronts moving through, some, some weather fronts associated with some severe weather. So let's take a look at the wind speed and direction. That's another interesting thing. Again, it's, it's going to be uh, real-time data 
uh, coming from, in this case, NOAA. And I can look at the different stations, I can get the temperature, and so on and so forth. This is the data behind the map. If I wanted more information for that, I can go ahead and look at the table of data. And you can see that I've got 4,412 po uh, points in this particular data set. This is global in scope. And so uh, that's fascinating to be able to pull up this kind of data at your fingertips. I could sort that data by temperature, wind speed, pressure, etc. But uh, I want to show you how this, da this data set was symbolized. If I go over here to change style inside ArcGIS Online, notice that I've got the wind speed in kilometers per hour uh, symbolized with thicker arrows with stronger winds. But also, I think what's, what's really quite interesting is if I go down here to the actual symbols themselves, I can look at how this symbology was generated. So let's go ahead and scroll down. You can see that I've got the symbols rotated based on the vector, the direction that the, the wind is traveling. So fascinating to be able to do that uh, inside this ArcGIS online environment. So again, we're looking at real-time data. We can make all kinds of derivative products and maps from that data, for example, an interpolated surface. Now, how did I do that? How did I do that? How did I generate that interpolated surface? Well, it's really quite easy. I can go over here to the perform analysis, and if I go to perform analysis, one of the things that I can do in there is I can analyze patterns. And what I've done here is I've interpolated points. So I've chosen the air temperature, and I generated a surface from that. So that's how I generated that surface. Again, powerful, easy to do, and all inside ArcGIS Online. Thanks.